Okay, should we go and do some cooking? Yes. Let's do it. Right, I want to see this this dish that uh, <laughs> that blew him away. The, the one to cook. Yeah. How did you come up with this? Well, so uh, I was actually born in Portugal because mm -hmm. uh, my parents were street musicians when I was little. So uh, street musicians. Yes. Oh, really? That's very cool. Yeah. So um, they chose to live in Portugal as their base because it was very cheap. Uh -huh. And uh, what you do in Portugal is you live off of the land yourself and you right. sell everything good. So in this case, you'd sell the chicken and then you keep mm -hmm. the offcuts like the chicken liver. So okay. this is a dish that uh, the village ladies taught my mom how to cook. And this is, this is one that kind of touched your heart. So it was amazing. The first liver. time that she ever cooked for me. Yeah. And she made this. And <laughs> she didn't know that my childhood's favorite dish was chicken livers. So yeah. by some cosmic force. Right. Won you over. It happened. <laughs> Turned out nice as well, didn't it? It did. It did. I mean, I was trying to think of how do I impress him. And I was like, I'm obviously not going to try and cook some restaurant dish. Yeah. So I was like, never going to see chicken livers or awful coming. So <laughs> and uh, gamble, I cooked though. it so many times. So I was like, OK, I'll nail this for sure. And this is in your um, your new book. Yes, yeah, it is. And uh, I mean, and the approach to the book—it's very—it's uh, kind of homely um, and it's kind of quite instructional, isn't it? Yeah. But there are some interesting recipes which I think I was quite surprised at, such as like the cured egg yolks and things like that. <laughs> well, it's not—it's not your average kind of home cooked book. Do you pick up a lot from from Rene and, and Noma? Definitely a lot from from Noma, from Rene. Every time we go out. When we do the pop-ups, we get to live places and yeah. get into things. Uh -huh. And I uh, think one of the things that's so nice about traveling and eating out is all these things you can take home and, yeah. and do there. I think it's great that when we have uh, steamed rice with soy-cured egg yolks, we get to be taken back to Japan. Yeah. And, and you spent a long time in, uh, in Mexico, didn't you? Yes. You were doing a, a pop-up in Mexico yes. for some time. We traveled uh, three times. Yeah. We've been to... Uh, Japan, uh -huh. to Mexico, to Australia, and we brought everyone, the entire team. Wow. 90 people, plus wow. uh, children, plus spouses. So a little more than 110 people. How long for? For three to five months. Ooh. That is quite a traveling band, isn't it? It's amazing. Uh, do, uh, do you pick up a lot, of, a lot of things along the way there that you would um, put in your next book, maybe? For sure. Really? <laughs> There, there are certain things for sure. I mean, after when we went to Mexico, uh -huh. they did a chili oil there right. that is it's a staple in our kitchen now. It's oh, really? On, it's on the dining table every day now. Yeah. For breakfast. Actually. For breakfast, oh, sure. well, for that dinner. Up, isn't it? Yeah. Now, this is quite pokey, isn't it? <laughs> so we've got lots of garlic. What, lots of garlic. What else was uh, there? Sweet and smoked paprika mm -hmm. and cayenne pepper. OK. So it's pretty fiery. Yes, lots of flavour. And do your kids, I mean, you've got three, three young kids, do they eat this sort of thing? Are they good with, with those sort of big flavours? Yeah, well, I mean, luckily for us, liver is something that they are open to because liver paste is like the yeah. thing in Denmark. You, everyone, all kids grow up with that in their lunch boxes. Uh -huh. So uh, they'll do this. This version might be a little too spicy for them, though. Right. Um, I think spicy food is the only time where I would make another version for them. Oh, really? It's the only thing I don't force them to, to you're, do. You're, I mean, you, you said in the book you're not particularly into sort of making two, three different dinners. No. You'd rather sort of do one and do, one. do yeah. more of it. Yes, and really? then you do dessert or you do a starter because there's time for that when you don't have to cook uh, three different dinners uh -huh. to please uh, the kids. Yeah. So they can eat what there is or they don't eat anything. But they also change up, you know. <laughs> One week, they own, one week, one of them might, might only like white food, suddenly. Only white food? Yeah, like bread and wow. Don't you love kids for that? <laughs> kids are like that. They don't care yeah. Yeah. Just how many hours you spent. They just want pasta with nothing. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pasta with butter. Yeah. I was going to say, that's quite a sophisticated palate to have liver in your it's school true. lunch. Yeah. I'm still on sandwiches. I think that's, that's <laughs> true, of, true of Copenhagen. It's such a culinary capital. I'm just wondering, Nadine, why, why, why is that? How has it become such a, a hub? Well, I think uh, a couple of uh, certain restaurants uh, helped draw uh, mm. a lot of people One from home. One in particular, home. do you think? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I would like to say that, but I might be a little biased. But um, it helped draw a lot of people from other countries there. Yeah. And I think both because there's a very nice, friendly community with people in Copenhagen. They stay, and because there's a, there was, at one point, yeah. a lack of different possibilities of restaurants and types to go to. So it's a good business opportunity too.
Yeah, and they're spitting all over the place. Yeah. So look, we have to ask you the, the first time you met Renee at Noma. Um, <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't your kind of the classical <laughs> meeting, was it? Okay, so I have to say when my first shift at Noma was total by accident. Yeah. I came in there, I wasn't prepared for, for what it was. I got this walkthrough and introduction of everything super quickly. Yeah. I'm sure the restaurant manager pointed out that, you know, this is the chef in the kitchen over there. And then on like one of my second or third shifts, I had they asked me to get linens on the first floor. And yeah. I was like, yeah, no problem, uh, where is it? And then one of the chefs, that happened to be Renee, he was like, I'm going up there anyway, I'll show you. Right. So we're in the elevator and we're only going to the first floor, so it feels like it was a long time being there, and I felt like it was an awkward silence, so I asked him what I asked everyone. So you thought everyone. you'd fill that gap? <laughs> yes. So That's I, never really a great thing to do. No. Well, it worked out very well, But it worked well, out well actually. for you, yeah. yeah. So I asked him what I'd asked everyone. I was like, right. so how long have you been here? <laughs> and he looks at me, like tilts his head a little bit. He's like, well, from the beginning. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> 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 and uh, then he looks at me again. He's like, you know that this is my place, right? Oh, cool. Oh. <laughs> See, most people would find that quite crucial that you'd know who your boss was <laughs> from day one, <laughs> but not you. Well, I there was, was too uh, much other stuff going on. Well, for starters, this food that I had never seen before was uh, yeah. Was it at the attention. time when you would go back to the beginning of Noma? Was it totally alien? Would you for say? me, yes. Yeah. I mean, my finest dining experience until I like went to Noma was maybe. A 20 euro menu in France. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so that classical kind of. Cooking. You know, you have your mussels to start with, a steak and fries, and some chocolate creamy dessert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean, you've had a lot of people over to your house um, to cook for a lot of famous chefs. I mean, I watched uh, a fantastic show on, called Ugly Delicious, where you have David Chang, fantastic chef, but that must be quite intimidating. <laughs> I would have thought. Well, I mean, a lot of these amazing chefs, they happen to be uh, good friends that we've also known for a very long time. Yeah. And uh, like Rene, they, I think most of them, they just enjoy that someone is actually cooking for them. Right. So they just want that kind of just relax, bit of you know, conviviality. Simple, simple home cooking. You yeah, know. something that they something. don't get on a yeah. daily basis. So Lasagna. I think Lasagna's when you great. spend so much time cooking for others, you're incredibly appreciative yeah. of others cooking for you. Absolutely. Right, let's move that over here. There's lots of little tips and tricks in your book. Isn't it? One of which is, is this, isn't it? Yes. So you pour the, the, the cooking liquor into the serving bowl, keep it yes. warm, blah, blah, blah. I think pasta, I love pasta, but it mm -hmm. always gets cold very quickly. So mm -hmm. since you're straining this very hot water from it, you might as well strain it into the mixing bowl, so you keep it hot. Okay, that's a good idea. Right, <laughs> you like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just that. Of approval. <laughs> <laughs> uh, remember, if you want to ask any of us a question this morning, then give us a call now on 0330 That's 0330 uh, Calls and charges, standard network rate. Are we really nearly ready to go? Yes. Okay. So do you swap cooking for each other on your anniversaries? No. Uh, Nadine cooks. Always. Always. Actually, ever since Nadine cooked me the meal of, uh, <laughs> of my life, yes. Nadine has more or less been, been, been the one cooking the yeah. big meals. Once in a while I'll do a New Year's, but uh, you know... <laughs> do, do you, can you cook as a home cook or do you yes. get carried away? No, no. My Nadine says I'm too messy in the kitchen, yeah, right. so she, she hates it. Yeah. And maybe I, that's I true. I don't hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Just the dishes. That's quite a chef trait, though, because I think yeah. you're so used to yeah, yeah. fresh pots and I like Someone else clearing up. Yeah. I, like <laughs> to, I like to cook at home, but I love yeah. to have someone cook for me. I yeah. love it. Also, yeah. I really like cooking for Renee at home, since, I mean, when he is home, it's nice. I think. It's, it's just very different to, to restaurant cooking. It's the ultimate, if a good, good home cooking is the ultimate in, in hospitality, I think. Yeah. You go to all that effort and that fuss to, to create something. You know, it could be very, very simple, warm. but it comes, comes from the heart, yeah. doesn't it? It's very soulful food. Exactly. Anyway, let's just, yes. let's just recap this. So, so this recipe is on the website, but there was lots of garlic. Yes. There was two types of paprika, the smoked and the hot, cayenne pepper. Yes. A lot of olive oil, lot chicken of olive livers. Oil. 
a uh, bit of tomato puree. Yes, exactly. And the plum tomatoes. Yes. And that's pretty much it. That's it. And what do you call it? Spiced chicken liver pasta. Delicious. Right. Chicken livers. How are you with chicken livers, Amelia Fox? Delicious. I'm looking forward to it. Mm. So this is the meal of your life. Well, as you described it, I had a. That's pretty special. Yeah, <laughs> this this was the first meal that I kind of like. Oh, this is the woman for me. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, a, a few years later, she cooked a five course meal, where I actually took my first Saturday off ever, um, and she had practiced it and had all the sous chefs taste it, and then they sent me home. And I came home, and Nadine was in the kitchen, you know, sweaty, <laughs> and had prepped a five course. What a beautiful meal. image. Yeah. Wow. He's really dressing it up. <laughs> but it was amazing. It was, yeah. it was the most genuine thing mm. that I've tried. And then, of course, a, a meal like that tastes amazing. Mm. And then nine Sorry. months later, we had a baby. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh -oh. <laughs> Can't call past that was a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> and this is your second Saturday off ever. Ah, no, I've had a few more since then. <laughs> since, since the new restaurant opened. Yeah, it's since the, the restaurant opened, it's the first time I, I leave. Mm. Can we taste it? Yes, yes absolutely. Tuck in, tuck in. What, what are we drinking on? This is well, to nice. begin with today, a bit of a bargain. £5.68, a gold medal winning wine. This mm -hmm. is uh, Wine Atlas Negro Amaro. Comes from Puglia in southern Italy. Lots and lots of bold, big, juicy flavours to work with the spice. Yeah. Chicken livers as well. If you have a, a wine that is a, a little bit maybe tannic, it can be a bit bitter. So you want something like this. Lots and lots of hearty flavour. Negro Amaro, the grape, it's been there for 1,500 years. Uh, so they're kind of getting the hang of it pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, hand harvested in October, then about kind of three months in oak gives a little bit more spice, but I think for what is in the glass, what an incredible price and what an achievement to win a gold medal as well. Yeah, it's delicious. It's it good stuff, stands up to the spice as well. It really does. Yeah, and I think that's the Negro Amaro. If you harvest it too early, it can be bitter, but here, later harvested in October, full ripeness, you get all of yeah. that rich flavour for the spice. How is that, Amelia this Fox? This is amazing. Do you want some? Have you had some? I've had a little bit, yes, but Ollie? I'm about to read and I have a mouthful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie, you haven't tried it yet. I'm, di have yep, I'm diving in. It's just delicious. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Um, and Rene, re remind us that um, that simple dish you're doing later. Yes, uh, toast. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeast. Not that simple. Um, well, it's a, it's a it's 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 a, a take on the British breakfast mm -hmm. that uh, in which we put. S two things that we do a lot right now. Mm -hmm. Foraging for wild food yep. and seafood. Okay. So it's basically a toast with our own homemade marmite or nutritional mm -hmm. yeast extract with some foraged wild garlic and some scallops. 